The following is a selected video from MasterTheContent.com where you will find an extensive video library of lectures for a variety of standardized admission tests. We offer over 600 hours of detailed video lectures for a multitude of standardized tests. Use our interactive in-lecture table of contents to find specific topics of interest. Work through numerous in-lecture examples to help you internalize concepts. To learn more, visit MasterTheContent.com. Your career, our passion. Okay, so on this slide, we are going to further divide uh, the ANS the autonomic nervous system into two main categories, two main divisions. We're going to divide it into the sympathetic division or the division that mediates sympathetic responses. And we are also going to divide it into the parasympathetic division or the division that mediates parasympathetic uh, responses. So these are the two main divisions of the ANS, of the motor division of the ANS, the autonomic nervous system. And they have what for the most part are very antagonistic uh, effects. So for instance, the sympathetic uh, division mediates responses that typically arouse us or prepare us for action. For instance, uh, increasing our heart rate or increasing uh, our rate of ventilation, um, dilation of our pupils, um, increasing respiratory airflow. Those are all actions or responses that prepare us uh, for action. So it's commonly actually termed or the response is mediated by, mediated by the sympathetic system are commonly referred to as fight or flight responses. Now, on the flip side, we have the parasympathetic system. Now, the responses that are mediated by this division, the parasympathetic division, tend to have what is a calming effect. For instance, they slow down your heart rate, uh, they will slow down your rate of ventilation, they will actually stimulate digestion as opposed to restrict it, etc. So as you can see, uh, most uh, of the functions or most of the responses that are mediated by these two um, divisions of the ANS are largely antagonistic. Now, with the exception of very few organs in the body, most actually organs will have what we call dual innervation. So they're going to be innervated by both uh, neurons or by both nervous tissue from the sympathetic uh, system, the sympathetic division, and from nervous uh, tissue from the parasympathetic division as well. Now, what I want to do next is on the slide, use a diagram to highlight some of the key differences or the differences in the responses that are mediated by these two divisions. So what we have on the left of the screen right there is the sympathetic divisions, the responses that are mediated by the sympathetic division. And what we have on the right in green right there uh, are the responses that are mediated by the parasympathetic division. So we're literally just going to go right down the middle and look at some of the responses that are mediated by this, these two divisions and how exactly they relate to one another, so their antagonistic nature. So, for instance, the sympathetic uh, system will function to dilate your pupils, to help you see better. That's a fight or flight response. On the flip side, the parasympathetic system will function to constrict your pupils, to reduce the number of light or the amount of light entering the eye. Now, uh, as far as your salivary glands are concerned, the sympathetic division will actually inhibit salivation because you're not thinking of eating at this time. You're not thinking of digesting food. You're thinking of fight or flight. On the flip side, the parasympathetic system will actually stimulate salivation. Now, uh, as far as the lungs are concerned, the sympathetic system will cause your airways to relax and it will do so just to increase your ventilation rate, to increase the amount of oxygen that's been taken into your system. Again. A fight or flight response. On the flip side, the parasympathetic system will function to constrict those airways and reduce the air flow. Now as far as the heart is concerned, you can expect that the sympathetic system will accelerate your heartbeat or the rate uh, of your heart and the parasympathetic system will slow it down. Now uh, the sympathetic system will also cause the production or it stimulates or it will stimulate the release of glucose from the liver another fight or flight response to increase the amount of energy, the amount of glucose available for energy production in the body, and it will also inhibit digestion. Now, um, on the antagonistic end of things, we have the parasympathetic system that will actually work to stimulate digestion. So the sympathetic will inhibit, parasympathetic um, will stimulate, or in the cases where the sympathetic is stimulating, the parasympathetic is more likely inhibiting. So the two effects are largely antagonistic as you can see. So it goes right down the middle and um, the sympathetic division will actually mediate a few responses that are unique to itself. Uh, for instance, the release of these hormones right here 
epinephrine and norepinephrine from the adrenal medulla. Those are two important hormone, hormones involved in what we call, again, fight or flight responses. And they do things such as accelerating our heart rate, increasing our rate of ventilation, just pretty much preparing our bodies for action. So those are some of the key uh, differences between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic uh, responses. One more thing I want to point out on the slide before we move on is something we've already talked about, but I want to reinforce the point, is the difference between a pre- and a post-ganglionic neuron. So a pre-ganglionic neuron is one that actually has its cell body within the central nervous system. So as you can see at the bottom of the screen right there, our pre-ganglionic neurons are those contained within the central nervous system. Now the post-ganglionic uh, neurons are the ones that actually emerge from those ganglia and carry uh, information or impulses to the effector sites. So it's important to make that distinction because you cannot get away with understanding the nature of the function of these two systems if you don't understand the difference between a pre and a post-ganglionic neuron. So that pretty much completes that as far as an overview of the antagonistic effects of these two systems uh, are concerned. What we're going to do next is we are just going to define a few important terms. Okay, so we already defined what a ganglion is. We're going to be talking a lot about ganglia in the coming slides, so let's revisit it. Like I said, a ganglion is basically a cluster or an aggregation of uh, neuronal cell bodies that are located outside the central nervous system. So it's just basically a grouping of neurons, neuronal cell bodies, the cell bodies of neurons outside the central nervous system. So that's the key feature. Once those neurons or the cell bodies of those neurons are outside the central nervous system is when they become ganglia. So as you'd expect, everything else on the screen right there is pretty much straightforward. Uh, autonomic ganglia, basically ganglia of the autonomic system. Sympathetic ganglia would be ganglia of the sympathetic nervous system. And similarly, parasympathetic ganglia, a ganglia of the parasympathetic system. We've already talked about what a pre and a post ganglionic axon is. Commit that to memory. Don't forget it. It's important for your understanding as far as uh, the peripheral nervous system is concerned. So what we have actually at the bottom of the screen is a really, really nifty diagram right there. And it very accurately illustrates the difference between a pre and a post ganglionic neuron. As you can see, the pre ganglionic neuron right here has its cell body in the central nervous system where it synapses with what is a post-ganglionic neuron in, a, in an autonomic ganglion. And that post-ganglionic neuron is actually what's responsible for carrying that impulse of those impulses to the visceral effectors, uh, which in the case of the ANS is smooth muscle, a cardiac muscle, and glands around the body. So that's the key difference between a pre and a post ganglionic neuron. So what we're going to do now that we have that understanding 